Hello everyone, I'm continuing my series <clears throat> on the different responses that our hero Pompowski. And I'm going to switch openings, this is like the third video I did, I did one on Kasparov, I didn't upload it yet. <laughs> but um, here is Anatoly Karpov with Black Pieces, um, his responses are uh, different to the uh, Trumpowski. And uh, I find that, you know, telling, you know, about a player's style and preferences. I'll go through these quickly because Karpov had a very long career. And, of course, there's more games uh, in this line. But we're just going to go very fast. His first game is from the Candidates Final, 1974. So this is a series. Younger Victor Korshner, of course. Um, with the white pieces versus Anatoly Karpov. So here, if you've been following my videos, you saw Magnus Carlsen, how he dealt with it. And as soon as it, it's finished, um, or I, I uploaded the Kasparov um, response video will be up also. So here it is Bishop G5, E6. We know that one of the main lines to this is um, D5. But... Um, Karpov was a known um, Nimzo Indian, Queens Indian specialist, and he perhaps felt more comfortable playing in this way. I would love to ask him why he chose this particular line, but he's had decent results with it in his career. It's a provocative line, as uh, it allows um, black, <coughs> excuse me, allows white to to uh, take up the center. Now, interesting also after knight f3. The game transposes into a Tory attack. Okay, so for instance, let's give a sample line h6. Queen takes f6. We have a Tory attack. So transpositions, um, oppo transpositional opportunities uh, abound. So here, of course, he did. Uh, he chose the most direct response, which was e4. This the the uh, downside of this move taking the center like this it basically, um, you know, forces it provokes Black to you know take the bishop here from you with h6. So now in order to keep the pawn, you can't play bishop h4, or bishop f4. You have to take. But hey, maybe if that's your intention to start out with, you have no problem doing that. The only thing is is that <clears throat> unlike the other lines in the Trumpowski where. Uh, white plays d5 excuse me black plays d5 and then bishop takes at least you're doubling the pawns here <clears throat> white's only compensation is that he has a two pawn center he gives up the bishop to achieve that so now this um brings for, forward another question <clears throat> is if you want a two pawn center <clears throat> why not just play you know e4 or you know something something like that and achieve it without giving up the bishop here so early in the game before it's really um, known whether you know the bishop here will be useful or not. So those are philosophical questions, but um, those note in this position that basically black um, gets the bishop here uh, for, for this price of a space disadvantage. So in the other lines, he's... Um, He's gaining the bishop pair from white, but his pawns are double here. It's a space, um, a space disadvantage. So let's see what happens. Queen f6, knight f3, there's d6, and we can see that white uh, has a good position right out of the gate. The game is equal though, because um, black structurally is very solid. Uh, he just lacks space. That is his only weakness. But if he can. Just coordinate his pieces, get his pieces out, and then slowly counterattack. White, he will be just fine. G6. And Karpov is definitely the man for this, who is a master of maneuvering and um, handling the pieces. And then, after playing over 100 games with Kasparov, uh, possibly the greatest tactician of all time, uh, he's used to being in situations and live, you know, living on the edge, so to speak. So, of course, they play queen d2. Obvious intention, castle on queen side. I mean, you can't really ask for a better position. White has a 
nice positions easy to play the you know play the pieces out and um you know black is not losing here but i like white's position here so a a6 h4 and black must be very careful not to allow the uh white to open a position right now but black is way behind the development and he has to kind of play this uh, crouching tiger hidden dragon position you know type moves to make sure that white can't break open position break open the position uh before he catches up in development so bishop g7 g3 so the position takes on a hedgehog nature for black b5 bishop h3 b4 very provocative play by Karl Pop. i do not um you know like this early aggression by black because again he's not really ready to to, to uh basically uh deal with uh you know white's active pieces so after b4 of course no he drops right in knight d5 and this is possible because the bishop on c8 is not defended because black has not castled this forces the position open bishop takes c8 castle good move by victor bishop b7 just rampaging through the black queen side bishop takes d5 c6 bishop b3 queen takes e4 look at the the guts by uh, karpov just grabbing the pawn right in the open file <clears throat> and <clears throat> here after queen takes e4 of course black would love to play this move but the knight is hanging so karpov seeing all of this and now the once um uh dominating look at position by white now is defanged once the queens have been taken off the board and now we have this equal type of game and this is Karl Paul's plan is basically to provoke white into uh overextending himself but Korsnoy has done a good job here although he is he did um take the big center early he didn't take too much and now he just has a nice position here where black has to be careful Okay, so now that B pawn is gone. And of course, you know, I play simple chess. This takes over the file. And notice how he fixes these pawns. Dark squares. So good moves being uh, played by both sides, and it's pretty equal uh, here. You have opposite colored bishops, um, but the rooks on the board present some dangers. We see a pair of rooks getting traded off, and Karpov seems to be headed comfortably uh, for uh, toward a draw. But um, here in a few moves, he makes. A move that reminded me of what Bobby Fischer did against Boris Spassky in their match for the World Chess Championship in Reykjavik. And I'll show you that right now. Notice that the pawn, of course, noise about the queen, this pawn. He blocks the rook off on c3. And this is why the bishop sacrifices itself. But that's not what I'm talking about. This is the move right here. So we see that um you know black is down a piece and um he's basically uh trying to you know get these pawns up so that he could get his piece back or at least yeah get white to sacrifice a piece for one of the pawns or what have you. So here instead of playing king g5 and just supporting the pawn the pawn advance Right, this would probably be equal, but it's still tough. I mean, somebody might want to look at that like more. 
but I think black is okay here. Karpov played rook take c6, and this reminded me of the move Fisher did when he, he captured that pawn and got his bishop trapped against Baskey. So uh, Karpov played rook take c6, obviously thinking he could queen and leaves draw. But after these moves, however, it seems like in his calculation, he underestimated the power of this A pawn. Now, if this A pawn was off the board, he'd be A-OK. -okay. But the fact that the A pawn is there, and he even queens first. But somehow he mis-evaluated the position. And Coach Noy was able to outmaneuver Karpov and uh, really, really beautiful queen ending. I wish I could go slower, but like I have other, you know, more games to show you in this line. But this is game 19 of the candidates final in 1974. And Korsnoy uh, won here as um, Karpov <coughs> was forced to resign. So we can see that uh, he did, cast, uh, Karpov was able to equalize, but this E6 line is very risky and provocative. I mean, you got to really know your way around to, to uh, you know, to, to play like this, this hedgehog setup. But some players like these type of positions. Let's go. Getting a time machine nine years later. Here's Anatoly Karpov. Um, I think he was still world champion at the time. Not sure. Yeah, yeah, 1985, Karpov was world champion still. Not sure if the match took place with Kasparov yet, where he lost, you know, the second match where he lost his title. So he either was world champion at the time or just lost the title. But um, the white player is a player, um, a Chinese player, uh, Jin Guan, was rated 24.40. Karpov is 2705 at the time, which was a big deal back then. You didn't have a lot of players over 2700. I think it was just Kasparov and Karpov at the time. So here's E6 again, C3. It's like a lazy move. B6 and E4. Again, allowing the big center. E5. Queen F3. Knight C6. Queen G3. Bishop B7. Already some suspicious move by White with the Queen jumping around. Got a space advantage. And we can say that Black is equalized. Again, you had the same idea. The queen side castling. And already here we see white chipping away at the, excuse me, black chipping away at the uh, white center. And here black is already better. So we can see the, the modern idea which is to allow white to set up, you know, an intimidating center. And then Karpov basically counter punches. And this is his, uh, his plan to opening. And we can see, look who has the center now. All right. And Karpov went to, went on to win that game. And I got to show you the whole thing. Like I said, we got a lot to go through. Okay, now, again, a young Michael Adams. This is Las Palmas, round 9, 1994. Michael Adams, again, um, you'll see in my Kasparov video, he actually uh, he played Kasparov in the um, Trumpovsky also. And you'll see in that video. And here is Karpov's response. E6, E4, H6, and there's a big center. And White's plan is real simple. So if you like to play white against this, it's real simple. The, this plan of setting up, you know, e4, d4, knight c3, and then castle queen side. And again, black has to be very careful because it is a provocative uh, system. Because you're basically telling um, white to come and get you. Okay, so now that e pawn is sitting there on e5. So that's a disadvantage for black if he can't get that, get rid of it. So f4, knight c6, bishop d7, and of course Kasparov, uh, Karpov is 
planning on castling queenside. It's not safe to castle on kingside. G takes f4. Queen takes f4. There we go. Castle. Knight e4. Knight b8. And then that's just, you know, bring the bishop there on c6 instead. And then the knight will switch over to d7. Okay. Knight h5. Very strong move by, uh, very concrete move by um, Karpov here. Is remember what I said about the e pawn. If White can't maintain it, and uh, if he can maintain it, then he'll be better. But he can't after Bishop takes f3, and just simply Bishop takes e5. The pawn drops, and so does um, White's chances of winning. Okay, now I'm relying on some tactics. Threatening mate on b7, c6, and he gives up the exchange. Good. Good rejoinder by uh, Karpov. Of course, if you know the rook is captured, then he'll take care. So instead, nice in between move, and then capture the rook. Rook h d8, and uh, Karpov is not even worried about this move right here. Queen uh, to take that queen to a7 because of queen b4, which is just winning. Okay, it's over after this. Say king c1, for example. Queen c3. Win and move. Threaten in here. And king b1. And then rook d4. <clears throat> a3. Rook c4. Threatening to take here. Rook c1. And rook d2. There's too much firepower there. Then now... All um all white can do is start checking. King C seven. And then that's pretty much a wrap. Knight F six. Rook takes. Knight E eight. It's King B six. And let's say Queen D eight. King A seven. And then all the checking the checks have to stop. Queen a5, of course, this queen takes a5. All right, that's why he ignored the idea of queen takes a7. Instead, Adams played a3, rook d4. c4, again, offering exchange of queens. <clears throat> why not? Uh, Karpov is up the exchange and uh, a pawn up. Okay, and then Karpov... This went on to win, the, win this game. All right, so we could see that um, basically that this opening is not a refutation of the Tromposki, but it's very provocative and in the hands of a skillful player, uh, it can be very annoying because it tends um, it, it tends to cause aggressive players to you know, overestimate their chances. They see this big center, you know, a nice two-point center, nice C3 in Castle, and White's position looks perfect. I mean, Tarish would be proud. And so, you know, you might feel psychologically that, man, you should be able to punish Black. And you, you look at his development, he just has a queen sitting on F6, pawn on G5, and you figure, man, I, I should be able to punish this guy. Let me rip the position open. And get after him with my lead in development. And then next thing you know. You know a couple of moves here and here. And it just seems like all of that just disappears. And next thing you know. The F pawn. The E pawn is dropping from the board. And. Next thing you know you're just worse. And you're just going to. You know going to this ending. Uh, this next one, the white pieces um, were, were held by Veselin Topolov, the young Veselin Topolov, of course, 27-25, and um, this is uh, from a tournament in 1997, again, E6, so we can see that pretty much in Karpov's career, he's pretty much sticking to E6, right, in his prime, serious, his serious, what I call serious professional years. He's sticking with this this move. This is his move. 
You know, if you want to learn how to play this system, you look look at this this guy's games what we're doing right now. Later on, when he was making you know like these guest appearances and stuff like that, he played other systems, but I don't really count that because he's just coming back and just you know kind of like when Kasparov does these ex exhibitions. I don't count that as just part of his serious professional uh, chess career. Okay, knight c3 again, d6, queen d2, g5. Of course, to bring the bishop here. g3, bishop g7, there's the queen side castle. Bishop d7, again, it's imperative for um, the position to be kept closed while white, while black catches up in development. So white tries to open it. F4, G takes F4, G takes F4. And look at that center. It's very uh, intimidating. Knight C6. And we can see again this attack on the center. Because that's what you have to do when your opponent builds up a big center. Is you have to be able to counter attack it. So after Knight C6, Knight F3. Black castles on the queen side. Queen e3, King b8, and even though White has an advantage in space, Black's position is is so solid structurally that there's really um, no clear way for White to, you know, to um, da uh, damage Black's position. He must be very pay patient, and Topolov's doing a good job here. Rook g1, Rook hg8, a3. A6. So you see these type of moves that's being played. It's kind of cat and mouse. Finally, Topolov decides, hey, I can play this move. And, and it totally just comes back. Because he wants um, black to destroy. He wants white to destroy his own center. He wants white to play, you know, a move <clears throat> like he takes D6. You know, a move like that where... It allows some holes to start creeping up in the, um, you know, in the white center. So he plays queen e7, bishop d3, plays bishop h8, and it threats here with bishop h7. Uh, f5 could have been played. Well, bishop h8, rook g3, and now Karpov decides to trade, d takes e5, f takes e5, rook takes, pawn takes, now there's a target for white here, just as there's a target for, uh, excuse me, target for white here, and a target for black here, f6, again, the main duty, Object, subject, and project of black is to tear down the center. So he's working on it. Queen takes, excuse me, bishop takes f6. Knight e4. Karpov loves his bishops. Brings the bishop back. c3. And now, <clears throat> if white, if black could somehow trade this pawn for this pawn, Okay, this position would even be much better. So he should definitely be considering e5 at this point, which I'm sure he is. Bishop c8 and bishop c2, because the idea behind bishop c8 is to play this move when this move wouldn't be possible. Uh, Karpov had missed that um, after c3, the e5 was playable here. Now I'm not gonna say he missed. That's too strong. But he chose not to play e5 here on account of d5. Although after d5, black would have just been fine after knight a5. But it's understandable that he wanted to prevent the move d5 altogether. So he plays bishop c8 first. So now on e5, you know, d5 would just be a blunder. But then Topolov has time to play bishop c2. So he plays that. You know, with the same, you know, the tension remains if e5, d5 is going to happen. So, b6. 
knight f2, queen d6, <clears throat> bishop e4, bishop b7, knight d3. So we see Topolar is building up against the square e5. It's really difficult now to get that advancing. And so we can say here that white is um is better here. Not by a whole lot, but white is white is better. Of course, the problem with taking here is the bishop and um queen are lined up and rook g1. That's what I meant to play. Rook g1 just wins the uh bishop. So rook f8, Tobolov backs up, a5, and now Tobolov begins to attack e6, rook g8, bishop a7, h7, excuse me, rook h8, bishop comes back, knight d8, and at this point white is uh, is clearly better, he has a clear target, his, um, his center is... Uh, it's solid. He has a little more space, and um, black is on the defensive. Knight h5. Knight e5. Now he occupies the uh, central square. E5. Rook g8, g4. Bishop to e7. Knight f4. Bishop g5. Knight f g6. Queen d5, rook e1. So this is one of those funny positions where white is better, but it's not. It's it's not clear. It's un it's unclear how to proceed, and we see Topolov having, you know, difficulties just trying to find the right way. Because even though the e6 pawn is weak, it's like how do you win that pawn? And we see some maneuvering going on. Bishop d3, knight c6, bishop c4. Queen d6, rook f1, knight d8. You see, we see this constant, this shuffling. Karpov strikes out with c5 against the center. And now, with this vulnerability in the center, Topolov is forced to relinquish some of it by playing d takes c5. Queen takes c5. Now, white is still better, but... His center is less is uh, not as strong as it was with the pawn of d4. Rook d8, bishop d8. So now Tobolov gives up the exchange to gain to get this pawn, and um, it's it's an un unsound exchange. And this is what this is what um, you know what. Karpov is trying to do with this type of op opening is you see he was better black white was better for a long while and then white eventually you know fell for the bait white may have got a little impatient and thought he was winning and then next thing you know you know he tries to press too hard and now Karpov has his pass pawn running up the board And once Karpov gets the advantage now, he's not going to let up. He keeps offering the trade of queens. And then h2 was played. And queen takes h2. Just loses the queen. Uh, uh, queen takes d3. And um, Tobolov lost that game. Hey, from a better, better position. Okay, so that gives you some insight on how that how tough of a nut this is to crack. It's not um, it's not really really that simple, you know. Now I definitely regard it as inferior to you know the main lines like D5, but E6 is is not like a walk walk in the park, and you can see the purpose of it and the type of players that will play that are those type of players who like those. You know, say play the modern defense and stuff like that. That just, you know, kind of don't mind being worse 
until you overreach and overextend, and then they come and try to uh, take over. Here's 1998. This is, uh, I think, the first edition. Actually, yeah, I think this is like the first edition of the uh, FIDE World Championship knockout. Um, yeah, because this is when, yeah, Karpov was the champion of the FIDE, and Kasparov was like the champion of whatever, uh, PCA or wh whatever it was. So Karpov was like still a nominal champion. And Anand had to go through all of these knockout rounds to get to Karpov. To play Karpov for the FIDE title. Karpov wound up winning the match. And then I remember people were saying what a travesty it was because Anand had to go through all of these matches and, you know, was tired. And where Karpov was just sitting there fresh, you know, ready to go. But this game, um, Anand had the white pieces again. And it was Anand's day here. Again, same line. I'm not going to. He plays bishop c4. You've seen the castle uh, on the queen side. But here, nine opts for bishop c4. And now you're seeing the king side castle. The queen side castle from Karpov. And this is a good position uh, for black. Now, these opposite side castling um, games is very important to get your attack in first if you can. And this, to me, this fits Anand better than Karpov because Anand is a very um, aggressive player, at least when he was younger. And, and Karpov being put in a situation where he has to attack on opposite wings, not a, a familiar uh, sight. Finally, he gets a rook to the G file. Nine strikes back in the center. And right here, again, the game is dynamically equal. White obtains a space advantage, but must be very careful. And now here's a dynamic move uh, by Anand. So, the knight g6, queen d8, knight takes h8, just losing an exchange, just like that. So, at the bishop c6, knight g6. Now, here, Karpov is better off playing rook takes g6. And at least after bishop takes g6, bishop takes f3, and queen takes f3. D takes, D takes, and Queen B4. Okay, and, and the game is, is still, you know, a solid contest. Black might even be a bit better. I like that, the, this queen side pawn configuration. I like that 3 to 1 over there. But instead, he played Queen D8. Now, check out the difference. Now, Knight takes H8. Bishop takes f3, and now Anand finds a beautiful move. Karpov uh, obviously overlooked it because after queen takes after queen takes f3, rook h8 is not a big deal. It's kind of like just a just an equal game, but here after knight takes h8, bishop takes f3. Knight f7, nice in-between move by Anand. Right, now the queen is attacked. Queen h4 by Karpov, and now queen takes f3. Okay. Queen takes d4 check, king h1. And now Karpov just finds himself missing a piece. Okay, queen a4, queen takes h5, and white is just better here. And then the nine just steps up the aggression. Nice move by nine, king b1, and then knight takes k5. 
king b8 and then knight takes e6 so that was a nice um example of of play against this line uh by anand again the the game was pretty e equal it was karpov that folded this time made the blunder uh usually it's karpov's opponents that wind up you know o overextending to doing something um you know to ruin the position but this time it was karpov um uh, with the move queen d8 that was questionable but again we see a different um you know set up instead of castle and queen side um a non-castle king side and what's interesting is he, he might have looked at some of uh Karpov's pre well, early with h6 and g5 he never castles king side he always castles on the queen side and then what happens is that Karp Karpov's opponents castle queen side early, figuring they're going to get this, you know, great attack. But what happens is Karpov also winds up castling on the queen side, and it's just a symmetrical game, uh, you know, analogous to when both players castle on the king side. So Anand comes up with this idea. It's like, okay, there's no way um, Karpov's going to castle on the king side because of the, you know, the um, extended pawns in the, on the king side and the weaknesses there. So he comes up with the idea to castle queen side, king side rather, and as Karpov on the queen side. And so you have this opposite uh, wings battle going. So good, good um, strategy by Anand there in that case. <clears throat> I'm going to show you this one last game, and this game is um, in 2013. This is uh, at a rapid tournament. Again, Karpov is retired and all of that, and he comes out every now and then. So the game I just showed you versus Anand was like the official, you know, last one at the professional level as far as the Trumpovsky was concerned. But I wanted to show you, you know, that when this guy comes out, you know, that it's, um, you know, these guys still have it. So here's Anatoly Karpov with the black pieces versus a player named uh, Vorobyov, uh, who is only 2207, master player, you know, strong player at this rapid. Okay, so Karpov has the black pieces. There it is, right? E4, H6, Knight of 3, D6, Knight C3, G5, and E5. And to me, this is premature. Again, this is what this is what Karpov wants. He wants he wants this. Queen e seven. Queen e seven. Bishop d three. Bishop g seven. Because now that the pawn has been committed there, now he's just gonna start putting pressure on the pawn. Bishop d seven. Right. Notice white. Excuse me. Notice black does not castle anything. Stays right there. White commits to the queen side. Knight c six. Bishop e4, d5, just shutting uh, white down. Now, I think d5 was incorrect. <clears throat> Maybe he should have just castled here. Or even played g4. g4, right, with the idea of um, challenging this pawn um, on uh, e5. Because it's all about the center, right? You can't forget about the center. And after g4, knight g1... Um, Say queen uh, here, check. Right king move. I like D takes E5 here. All right, tearing down the center. Okay. But back to the game, Karpov played D5 here. And the game, you know, his position started looking like a, like a French advance variation, right? But here, uh, Vorobyov finds a good move. And he plays bishop takes d5, right? Being Having a nice uh, lead in development. He wants to open the position. So he sacrifices the piece for two pawns with tempo. And then plays knight f6. There's no way that... Um, Karpov can get away with bishop takes f6. So he skates to the side with the king. This is good uh, for white. 
Knight takes d7, queen takes d7. And then he keeps it moving with d5. Again, can't afford to have the position really come open. Knight e7, e6, queen d6. But even the old master, right, the old fox, even though he's in a little bit of trouble here, he just keeps his composure. So he takes f7. And now king takes f7. So it looks like the king is, uh, you know, all exposed. But now you have to get concrete here and say, well, how do you get to the uh, black king? Right, the f-file is closed. The queen, the e-file is guarded by the queen on d6. Right, you have, inve you have invested uh, some material. How do you do this? Rook h e1. Rook h e8. And to me, this kind of ends things right here. Uh, I don't, I do not think you should trade queens here. But queen e6, queen e6. Carpa played king f6. Rook d7. Rook a c8. C3. Knight c6. And I'll just go a little faster. Karpov takes a little walk there, wins the advanced pawn, and this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, you overextend yourself, and again, you know, I like the move at the beginning, the bishop takes d5, e takes d5, but usually when you do stuff like that, you make a, you sacrifice a piece or something early, you got to be able to play accurate for, you know, sometime 9 or 10 moves straight, if you miss one of those moves, all of a sudden your advantage dissipates. So, it's a very double-edged, you know, you know, double-edged decision. Because it might be right. You know, if you go back and look at it with the engine, you'd be like, oh, that was the right move. But, can you make, the, can you make that, can you make eight only moves in a row? Where that's the only move that, you know, is going to maintain the advantage, right? And then, who has the better chance of making a more accurate move? The guy that's, you know, former world champion, 2,600. Or you at, you know, 2200 or 181900. So you had to think about those uh, things also. So let's wrap this up. Conclusion is that uh, this move in the Trompovsky E6 is not, not the, definitely not the best. Okay, but um, black can still reach equality, but I think white has a lot more chances than in white has a lot more chances than any other lines but the game um takes on a rich a rich character an unbalanced character so if black wants to win i think this this um this type of provocative approach is a good approach and uh Karpov showed as i uh, you know demonstrated in his repertoire that e6 is definitely um you know, not for the faint-hearted, but if you hey, you're a good positional player, you got good understanding and patience, and you can wait for you know the ending, and you like the counter strike, then this variation is good for you. Please like and subscribe, comment, and um, suggest, and um, you know, in a friendly way, of course. And um, I'll see you guys on the next presentation.